Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me in prayer. On my heart, entrench your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me. Is my life my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation? Amen. Sir, we wish to see Jesus, said the Greeks to the disciples of Christ. Right? But which Jesus did they want to see? Whenever I read this text, I remember one of my favorite movies. Now, y'all may think less of me after I say this is one of my favorite movies, or it shows um, the, the social uh, class I'm in. And that is a Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby. <laughs> when you think of this movie, there's this one scene where they're all sitting around and Ricky Bobby is saying grace, right? And he has all of the, the people that have sponsored him, all the food around. And he's sitting there, and Ricky Bobby, he loves to pray to little baby Jesus, right? And there's that part where they start really debating the Jesuses they like. And Ricky Bobby says, oh, eight pounds, six ounce, little baby Jesus with your golden fleece diapers, playing with your little Einstein toys, you know? Or his friend, he wants his favorite Jesus is... Jesus is in an angelic heavenly band singing lead for Leonard Skinner. And he's just in the front row hammered having a good time, right? Or one of the boys, his boys, they like the ninja warrior Jesus that goes to town on people. Or one even says, well, I like the tuxedo shirt Jesus. It shows that he can be formal, but he also likes to party. You know, we all have <laughs> our opinions of Jesus. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Is it the cute little baby Jesus nestled away in a manger? Or maybe it's Rabbi Jesus, the Jesus who is well versed in Scripture, but that's about all he's good for. Or maybe the example Jesus, right? This was the Jesus that was popular in my high school years, the WWJD Jesus. What would Jesus do? And this Jesus would be the Jesus you would imitate in good works, or at least you could stare at the bracelet. And I was so holy. I had like 12 of them up and down my arm. I really wanted to do what Jesus did, except die on the cross. You know, I didn't want to do that. But everything else. But you would stare at the bracelets, and hopefully staring at the bracelet would prevent you from doing something too detrimental to your well-being. There's Buddy Christ, Bread King, Jesus, even Jesus who takes you from a zero into a hero with your best purposeful driven life right now. Fallen man never wishes to see and desires the true Jesus. No sinful man, woman, or child desires to behold the wounded, sacred head of Jesus. The bloody, beaten, and scourged body of Jesus isn't something we long to see on a daily basis. Yes, we have a crucifix, but really, really think about this crucifix. This is like the ABC family version of the crucifix. This is like the Pixar version of the crucified Christ. One, he's clothed. He didn't die clothed. He died naked. But then above that, he scourged, stripped, not even a piece of skin left on him. Blood everywhere. A crown of thorns dug into his brow. It's not pretty to behold. Even today, we don't like looking at it. We want to tame it and edit it so it doesn't offend us or make us uncomfortable. Not that we need to behold the passion in all its details. But it says something about what we're hearing and remembering. The passion of Jesus turns our insides out. Why? Why is the thorny crowned Jesus foreign to us and sometimes even despised by us? Well, Jesus says it. He says of his passion, now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. 
As Bernard of Clairvaux and later Paul Gerhardt wrote in our hymn, O Sacred Head Now Wounded, the verse goes, Mine, mine was the transgression, but thine the deadly pain. Lo, here I fall, my Savior, tis I deserve thy place. Why don't we meditate on the crucified Christ all the time? Because you and I know that it should be us instead. No one likes watching as another is punished for our mistakes and transgressions. All our debt, lust, doubt, jealousy, anger, gossip, gluttony, laziness, covetousness, rebellion, lies, and unbelief was placed on the Lamb of God, and there at Calvary was the judgment pronounced. There do we see the wrath of the Father against us, not just against our sin, but against His entire creation. The Father doesn't like sinners. <laughs> That's why He kills them. Right? On the cross, Jesus isn't just sin. He is the sinner. And what happens under the Father's wrath? He dies. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. But not the Jesus that reminds me that I've wronged my Creator. Not the Jesus that makes me remember all I've done and will do against God and my neighbor. Repent with me, my friends, for left to our own logic, our own emotion, and our own devices, we will never desire to behold only Christ and Him crucified. Because, my friends, because our very nature is poisoned with the devil's venom of sin, we don't possess the ability, the love, or the desire to know Jesus as he truly is. Outside the gift of faith, Christ crucified is a stumbling block and foolishness. But, and that's a big but, as St. Paul says, but... <laughs> To us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The cross, Christ crucified, is the power, the way by which we sinners are rescued from the jaws of death, released from the tyranny of the devil, and saved from the eternal punishment of sin. That is why the Holy Spirit inspired St. Paul to know nothing but Christ and Him crucified. As Jesus himself says, And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. On the cross, Jesus does all the work of drawing sinners to himself. He draws all by claiming all our sin as his own. He doesn't wait for us to desire him or to need him. No. From all eternity, the Son of God was destined to be slain on the cross for the sin of all creation. On the cross, Jesus brought us back from the devil to God, from death to life, from sin to righteousness, and now keeps us safe there, as Luther wrote in the large catechism. On the cross... Jesus was found as the only cursed one under the law in order that we may be free and forgiven all our transgressions against the law of God. Today is the Feast of the Holy Cross. And it's just that. A feast on the very body of Jesus that was lifted high on the cross to purchase us forgiveness, eternal life, and salvation from the condemnation we rightly deserve. Tonight, my friends, fellow baptized, we do more than remember the historical event of Jesus' crucifixion. We could all just gather here and we could all just watch Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ and ponder the gruesome nature of the crucifixion. But that's not why we're gathered here tonight. We're not watching a movie tonight. Nor are we sharing our personal perspectives about Jesus, no. Tonight, beloved, we are gathered by the Holy Spirit to be forgiven, to be justified, to be declared righteous, to have our record of sin absolved in the blood of Jesus. 
We are gathered here tonight to receive the distribution of the will enacted in Jesus' death on Calvary's cross. Blessed are you, beloved beneficiaries of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. That's what you're getting tonight. Think of it this way. This has always baffled me a little bit. Imagine you have a rich, 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 and I mean filthy rich, granddad. You know, maybe you did, I don't know. I've never met your granddad. Or maybe some of you that are young. But imagine, you knew he was loaded. He has like $12, $20 billion. And when he dies, you know you're getting all of it. Would you show up at the reading of the will? And would you cash the check? Who in here would do that? Anybody in here, $20 billion? You're going to show up? I'm showing up. I'll be there early. I'll wait outside the lawyer's office. I'll be the first one he sees at 5 o'clock in the morning. Why? I'm getting the goods. I'm getting the full thing. Look at what Jesus did on the cross. He purchased it all for you. Isn't that great? And guess what? Every single time the Holy Spirit calls you here, you get it. You get the full thing. You get the fullness of the Father's love. All of His mercy. All of His grace. All of His forgiveness. You don't get some. This isn't an annuity. You get a little bit this divine service and a little bit at the next divine service. You get the whole shebang here tonight. All your sin, all your doubts, all your transgressions forgiven. No partial payments. It's all in full. Be at peace, beloved. The Father's wrath against sin is satisfied. The devil conquered. And you, you, by name, are ransomed, rescued from the jaws of hell and the sting of death. Be at peace, for you are pure in the cross of Christ. The Father is well pleased with you, and He will raise you up on the last day, both bodily and spiritually, to live forever with Jesus in His kingdom, which will never end. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Hallelujah! Amen! Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.